Today we're going to be looking at how you can actually calculate a spread call option on two indices. We're going to be looking at the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. Now we've actually done a previous video on this where we computed the call value of the spread. However, we are now going to incorporate stochastic volatility into our models. So in previous videos, we've recently been looking at the Heston model, which uses the square root variance process to get a stochastic volatility measure while computing option prices. We're now going to apply this to our spread call option of these two indices. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's go through this Jupyter Notebook. So one of the many benefits of the Monte Carlo simulation process is that we can actually price under different multiple factors. So I refer to multiple underlines um, of asset prices, of stochastic volatility, and even changes in interest rates. So in this tutorial, we're going to be exploring the pricing of a European spread call option on the difference between two stock indices. Here we'll be considering the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. Now we're going to be looking at a more general stochastic process. So the SDEs will have stochastic volatility as described by the Heston model that was developed in 1993. So our spread call option comes down to a few SDEs. So under the Heston model, we have two SDEs for the underlying asset price and two SDEs for the variance process. For the stock asset prices under risk neutral measures, we have our deterministic component which takes in the risk-free rate and then our uh, discrete distributions. So this is the dividend distributions. And then we have our diffusion component, which is dependent on this square root variance process. So the volatility is modeled by the square root variance process. So variance is modeled as a mean reversion process. So here we've got kappa, which symbolizes the rate of mean reversion. We've got theta, which is the long run mean of this variance process. We've got V1, which we're directly modeling. And we've got our sigma, which is like the volatility of the variance process. So the volatility of volatility, essentially. Now you'll notice here that we have uh, th four different Weiner processes that we're trying to model at the same time. So the Monte Carlo procedure is exactly the same as for a normal spread call option, which we've done a video on before for the NASDAQ and S&P 500. Except here, we have a more complicated correlation matrix between these Weiner processes. So we have to simulate these four at the same time. Here we have a special correlation matrix, which describes the relationship between each one of these Weiner processes. So we have the relationship between um, the NASDAQ and then the S&P 500 variance process. So the linear relationships between each one of these Weiner processes is described in this correlation matrix. Now the notation as we went through, we've got ST is the financial index. So we've got um, the variance as VT. C is gonna be the European call option price. K for the strike price, which is actually going to be specified as a difference between um, the indices in terms of points. We've got uh, Weiner process, W. We've got uh, the interest rate, the discrete dividend payment. Uh, we've spoken about Kappa. Theta, and then uh, we also need this uh, V for the uh, initial variance. We've got sigma is the volatility of variance, and then our rho is the correlation parameter. We've got T, which is the current date, and we've got T, which is the maturity date. So a while back, we actually discussed how we could use futures or options so we could speculate on the divergence between the spread of the S&P and the NASDAQ indices. We're gonna follow through with this example, but now we're going to be incorporating stochastic volatility under the Heston model. So we're going to use the same parameters that we had back on the 1st of March, 2022. So you're just gonna copy this from my website and we're going to import some dependencies. So we've got NumPy, time, and from SciPy linear algebra module, we're going to take Koleski. This is for the Koleski decomposition of that correlation matrix. So here we've got some Heston specific model parameters and I've just made these up for this example. So if you wanna know how you can actually calibrate the Heston model and find out what uh, the best parameters to use for your option prices, you can. we've actually done a complete video on this step where we used the market option prices and then calibrated the Heston model to find the best fit using MSE. So we've got theta, kappa and sigma 
um, defined for both of our assets and we have the initial variances of both processes. Then we've defined our correlation matrix between the Y and a process under the risk neutral measure. So again, you can find all this in a video that we've done before. So now for the slow implementation, let's take a um, slower look at how we're actually gonna compute this Monte Carlo simulation and we'll do this for each time step for each simulation. So here we're going to define the Monte Carlo specific parameters. So here we've got a thousand discrete time steps and we've got a thousand number of simulations. So we're just gonna start the timer because we wanna see how long it actually takes. Let's pre-compute the constants. Our uh, time step each time is just gonna be our total T, one year divided by N. And then our log normal prices are just gonna be NumPy log of the NASDAQ for um, our first asset price. And then our second is gonna be the S&P 500. So for the Heston model adjustments for each time step, we're gonna take the kappa that we've defined over that yearly period, and we're going to place that in terms of our time steps. So let's adjust the kappa. Uh, the rate of mean reversion uh, just by a straight DT and then for our sigma the volatility of variance process we're just going to take the square root of DT and multiply that to our sigma and of course our variance process we're just going to make sure that that's initialized with our original variances for each asset. Now Performing lower Koloski decomposition, essentially what we're doing here, we're finding the lower triangle of our uh, correlation matrix. And we're gonna be using this to multiply through by random normal variables to get our correlated Weiner variables. So the standard error places placeholders, this is just gonna be used to actually compute the error that uh, around our calculation. So running through our Monte Carlo simulation here, we've got for each simulation I and M, we have our log prices initialized. Then we're gonna step through time. So for each time step J, we need to generate the correlated Weiner variables. So we're gonna do this by actually simulating uh, standard normal uh, distributed variables, four of them. So with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and then we're going to compute the inner product. So do matrix multiplication of this Z correlated, uh, of these Z uncorrelated variables and multiply them through by our lower Koleski decomposition of our correlation matrix. Then we're going to get uh, the Weiner uh, array, which is just our correlated variables. We can then take our simulated variance processes and we need to do this first. So here we have um, variance, which is equal to the initial variance plus our mean reversion rate multiplied by theta, which is that long-term variance minus our current variance plus our volatility of variance times by the square root of the variance at the current time step. We then multiply this diffusion component by our Weiner process and you need to make sure that you use the correct index for your specific term. So here um, we actually looked at things in terms of asset price one, asset price two, variance one, variance two. So I need to index on the respective indices for the thing that I'm trying to calculate. We do the same thing for variance process two and now that we have those we can then use that to calculate our log asset prices. So first the deterministic components, we've got the risk-free rate minus the dividend minus 0.5 times by the variance. And that's all multiplied by the time step. We then use that to compute our log asset price in the next time step. So we use the log asset price of the time step um, before plus our deterministic component plus our diffusion component, which is just gonna be the square root of the variance times by our time step. We then multiply that all through by our Weiner process of this specific correlated variable. Then after we run through all the time periods to time t, then we get the last asset price, log asset price, and we take the exponential to get the correct asset price, and this is in terms of the index, so this will be in points. So if then for the call option, we take the max between zero, the difference between asset one and asset two index price, and then we minus K, which we just described as the strike, which was the difference at the time that we started 
of the difference between the indexes. So then we complete this process for m number of simulations. So I think we had i um, in m number of simulations and then we can compute the expectation and then the standard error. So for the expectation, we end up getting 830 bucks with a standard error of $46. Now, it's important to know that the calculation time here is taken 16.43 seconds. Now for the fast implementation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna vectorize this option pricing. So now I'm using the same discrete time steps and the number of simulations. Now, the only difference is I'm getting this generated uh, correlated wind variables and I'm doing this outside of our for loop. So now we've got these random normal variables of size n by m by four. So this is our time steps by the number of simulations by our four variables for each one of those conditions. We then can compute our correlated um, Weiner variables for each time step for each simulation by just multiplying, computing the inner product between Z, our random normal variables, and our lower Koloski uh, decomposition. We then need arrays for storing our prices in our variances, and I'm gonna use shape N plus one so I can store the first price and then the first variance. I'm then going to fill these values with the log of um, asset price one and asset price two, and then our initial variances. Now stepping through this process, all we need to do now for the Monte Carlo simulation is run through time. We're gonna run through time from one through to n plus one. So simulating the variance process, we just use the same formula as before, but now we're indexing on the previous time period and we're saving it into the current time period. We then also need to remember to correctly index our Weiner process. So we have our N, which is our time. So we index by time. We take all of our uh, simulated uh, variables. So all of our M simulations, and then we need to index the correct uh, Weiner process uh, for the respective asset that we, we're calculating at the time. We can then calculate our log asset prices by getting the drift terms first and then indexing on the current time that we've just calculated. And then we can get our at log asset prices by using the previous log asset price plus the current uh, drift term and then our current diffusion term, which is gonna be our current variance uh, multiplied by time step, taken to the square root, multiplied by the respective Weiner process. The reason I'm indexing from before is because I only created a matrix of N by M in length. We then take the exponential of our log prices and then we use the final asset prices to compute our call price. So then we can see that we get a call value of 895 here with a similar standard error as before, but the calculation time has taken 0.25 seconds. That's a 60 time improvement in terms of computation time. So now visualization, I'm just going to show you, we can get the index spread options now with stochastic volatility and you can see the relative um, simulations. I've only shown four here, but obviously we did a thousand for between the NASDAQ and the S&P with changing variances. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already to the channel. If you'd like to get more involved with the quant community that we're trying to build here and be involved with like-minded individuals, you should go ahead and look at the Patreon link in the description below.